Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're working on uh, Bloom, Chow Bella's, uh, I'm sorry, Blooming. Um, we're on page one. Oh my goodness, I thought I was ready, but we've got all this stuff in our in our vision. Let me get some of that out of the way. Okay, here we go. Um, we're going to start with two, four and a half, by eight, four and a half by eight. You're gonna score a half inch on the four and a half inch side. And this is gonna be a gate fold and then with two diagonal pockets, we're gonna do an insert that's gonna hold everything together nice and neat. Okay, four and a half by eight, you're gonna need two of those, one for each side. At it. My goodness. Oh, here it is. Okay, these are going left and right. <clears throat> and uh, because we're doing a diagonal pocket on top with an insert, we don't need magnets here. So that's kind of nice. Once in a while. I I like to do that. Okay, so this is from the 8x8 collection pack, and it's just split in half. Mm, it looks like I need to take a sliver off the edge. <clears throat> Sorry, my side table with my trimmer on it keeps shifting on me. It's all the squeaking in here. Okay, that should do it just that should be perfect. And it is. We'll go ahead and glue this down. And again, there won't be any magnets here, so we don't really have to worry too much about that. At the moment. Now you may notice I'm not inking anything and I don't ink it when there's a white core on a white background. You can, but it's really not necessary because your white's going to jump at you either way. Now, if you want your coat, if you want it to have a little more depth than inking the edges, we'll go a long way to doing that for you. And I tried a couple things um, on this. I didn't like the brown. And then I tried gold, and that looked good. But I think silver ink would be really pretty, too. So it would just lighten the edges and make them a little bit more reflective. Okay, now each one of these top flaps is going to have a diagonal pocket. And you're going to start with a 4x4 four four square, and you're going to score a half inch on two of the four sides. Two of the four sides. And then you're just going to cut from one corner to the other. So it's pretty darn straightforward. So score two out of four sides, and then um, cut a diagonal corner to corner. And that is going to go right here. So again, start with four and a half by four and a half. Half inch on two out of the four sides. Tuck those sides in and then cut across corner to corner. There we go. And I went ahead and glued my designer paper on one of them. So we'll do this one together. Part of the reason I did that was so I didn't accidentally cut through that paper, um, which was still in a diagonal. <laughs> 
or a square. I didn't want to accidentally cut through it. Okay. Four and a half by four and a half. Square half inch on two sides. Make sure you fold them under before you cut your diagonal. And then I just laid my square designer paper down and just put a tick mark on either side, laid it in my trimmer on a diagonal. Lined up the two tick marks and created this triangle. There you go. Now, I already covered my insert. This insert is from the 12 by 12 collection. Um, I think it's from the background. This is the paper pad. Yes, it's from the background. And that's going to go right in here to hold this page close. So the dimensions on this are 7.5 by 7.5. And, and then I've just got it matted to go in here. It's getting hung up a little bit on the, uh, the scores. So um, put your bone folder in and score down and that way it'll slip in totally. So that is the insert. Now for the inside. This is from the 12 by 12 collection. Also patterns and solids. So that's going to go right here. You can do up and down, side to side. I'm going to do side to side. This is pretty too. But I liked this watercolor. I thought it went really nicely with the insert. Uh, that glue on it. Okay, there we go. Now I've got a couple of embellishments that I fussy cut from this sheet. So I took a few pieces out and fussy cut them. I'm going to put one down here, or actually two, down here. And then I've got this one to go up here. Okay, like so. My goodness, I've got junk all over this. I don't know what's going on. Let me find my little magic eraser. See if I can get some of that off. No, I can't. There's going to be two elements that go on top here, um, which are these trifolds. So this is, I'll come back to this and tell you what the size is, but these are cut apart in the 12 by 12 collection. So I'm going to have one here and one here. And then over here, we're going to add color blocking, like so. Let me get this out of our vision. So we're going to have color blocking here and here. And then we're going to add these little elements, which were cut apart from the 8x8 collection pack, the collection pack. So it's the cover. The cover of the collection pack had these two had a strip on the bottom that you could cut apart. I'm gonna add one here and one here is tuck excuse me, tuck spots. Here and here. Okay, so when we're all done, it's gonna look like that. Get my little cards here is tuck spots. Okay. So I'll be starting over here and we're gonna go ahead and add our two smaller elements make sure that's not going to interfere <clears throat> so we're going to do the top the bottom then add the center <clears throat> just checking to see that all all the pieces are the same width Looks like the green is a little bit narrower, so I'm going to turn down this to match. Okay. 
I bet it's a sixteenth of an inch. It's very small. It's probably like a thirty second. It's really small. But details like that do make make a difference uh, in presentation, especially when you're color blocking. Okay. I hope everyone's having a good day. It's we've had um, a bit of a run with the heat, but it's cooler today, and um, it actually rained yesterday, which is. Very unusual. We don't. We usually have dry heat. We're very close to the desert, so the um, humidity is kind of new for us. It felt very tropical. I don't mind it. My hair hates it, but my skin loves it. Okay. So now we're gonna lay this in. This will be the the final piece that we're gonna trim to fit and. Leave just a slight line on the top and bottom. That's where the term color blocking comes in. And we'll see what that looks like. How would I do? I did all right. So as a rule of thumb, when I'm color blocking, I always lay down my smallest pieces first and then measure the, the larger piece and trim it just because it's easier to handle the larger piece in the trimmer itself. So I wouldn't want to go back and you know keep putting my two or one inch strip in the trimmer. You, you trim the smaller, uh, the larger piece. It's just easier to handle for me. Um, so that's just a pure preference. For you, you'll have to decide what works best for you. Let me see. Here it is. <clears throat> so now I'm going to line all these up again. Make sure they're all the same width. And trim them if they're not. Yeah, it looks like I need to trim this a little bit. And I, I measure the top and bottom, just in case this isn't a perfect right angle. <clears throat> I get my desired visual. Oh. <clears throat> Let's see what goes on the bottom. Let's see the top. So we'll move those two down, then we'll add the green. Moving right along. <clears throat> <clears throat> Pardon me. Trim this one to fit. Put glue behind there. I'm just gonna miss this one.
Normally I would use my fingernail, but this is white paper, so anything on your hands will transfer and show up. That's another reason why I love black. Okay, I put a pop dot on this, and then, like I said, these are just two fussy cut elements, so I'm going to glue this down, or stick it down, and then go. This will be glued down. And focus on the center just in case I want to tuck something slightly behind it. And then this is going to go at an angle here. Now, again, these are going to go down like this. I'm going to give you these measurements right now. And they open, both of them open the same way. So it's an accordion fold. This is eight and five eighths, eight and five eighths by three and seven eighths, eight and five eighths by three and seven eighths. And you're going to score at two and two and seven eighths. Two and seven eighths, five and three quarters. writing my note for when I put my cut list together. Double checking. Yes, that's right. So you're going to do two of those. I am going to hold these closed. I'm going to adjust to cover up any, any mess I have made right here. I got some glue on here. Um, I'm going to uh, put a bow around these, but I looked through my stash and I don't have anything I like. So it's either going to be a white um, twine or um, a silver, probably a silver bow. So for now, that is finished. And I need to find my insert. And here it is. Now it's likely um, after I've finished designing some of the other pages, I gotta go in here and burnish these, that I'll probably put a little something on the side just to make this a little bit prettier. Uh, a little more impressive when you open the page. And then I'll train these a little, and that way when I go to put um, my insert in, it won't get hung up on these flanges right here. Okay, that's it for page one. I'll be back soon. Oh my goodness. I didn't realize how crooked the camera was. I apologize, everyone. Back soon. Hey everyone, it's Daphne, and I scrounged around and found some ribbon. So we're going to go ahead and finish this page. So I am um, adding a bow to both of these and I'm going to glue the back down like this. So the bow is what's going to hold this trifold closed. So the way I like to do it is I like to tie my bow first, make sure that um, I've got enough ribbon, which I tested that already offline, and to kind of get my bow centered before I glue the back down and I can't pull the, the ribbon back and forth. Now the other thing you can do is um, glue the top and the bottom and leave the center open so that the bow can slide around, but then you run the risk of maybe actually pulling it all the way through. So it's just something to think about. I am left-handed, so my bows are always upside down, unless I turn my project upside down, which sometimes I do. Or sometimes I just try really hard to think about doing it in a direction that does not feel natural to me. <laughs> like that. It turned out terrible because I was thinking too much about trying to do it the reverse. So what I'll do is I'll just turn my project upside down. tail end on this side. Okay.
This is just simple white satin. It's funny how hard it is to learn to tie your shoes and then how hard it is when you get older to tie anything because of arthritis. Fingers just don't want to, they're just not that nimble anymore. Okay, there we go. It's still not perfect, but it will do. Okay, there we go. This one turned out so much better when I wasn't doing it online. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put these down just like so. Let's get some glue. I think this turned out pretty. Let me put some weight on that. Oh, I see what I did. It was a twist. Try that one more time. The twist of the back there. That will do. Okay, looks good. I am going to close this and lay something heavy on it that I don't want to get stuck in. There we go. Hinge, so I'll just fold it down. Okay, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to put this box back on it and let it dry. Okay, that's it for that page. Thanks, everybody.